Hey FTD fam, welcome back. This is the second last episode in the end time series. So let's just jump into it, see what we're gonna learn from this episode. Okay, we have one of the signs left and I'm mentioning it last, even though it is not the actually the last, but it helps explain the last days of mankind. This is probably, this is before the Dabba and before the sun rising from the West. And the 10th sign is the great fire, Nar, the great fire. And the great fire is not mentioned in the Quran, but it is mentioned in numerous ahadith. Of them, the famous one is Sahih Muslim, that Qiyamah will not come until you see 10. And in this hadith, he said, and the last of them, the great fire. So there shall be something called the great fire. What is this great fire? Combining all of the hadith together, combining all of the hadith together, uh, it appears that the great fire is something that will begin from Yemen, to be more precise, from Aden. In one hadith, it says from Aden, which is the port city of Aden. And it will force the people, it will force the people to flee from it. And they will be forced to go to Bilad al-Sham. So the fire will rage. Now, what will be the fuel of this fire? What will cause something that will scorch the earth one mile after the other and keep on going all the way from the tip of one side of the Arabian Peninsula all the way to the other side. And yeah. it is well known that in this land, most of it is nothing but sand. What will cause the fuel of this fire? Again, go back to some of the things I've been postulating and Allah knows best. So there shall be a great fire at the end of times. And it could be miraculous. It could be something that Allah Azza wa says, all of this is allowed. And the people will be forced to flee for their lives. They will be walking. They'll be riding, they'll be running, they'll be on camels, and they will have to stop to rest. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is a Sahih Muslim. Hudayfad ibn Usayd al Ghifari said, One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to us when we were sitting in a room and we were talking about the judgment. He said, Judgment will not come until you see 10 signs. Now we come to the end of our classes. Once again, I go to these 10 signs. Number one, this is not in order. Remember, he's just saying all of them are there. Number one, the rising of the sun from the west. Number two, the Dukhan. Number three, the Dabba. Number four, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Number five, Isa ibn Maryam. Khuruj Isa ibn Maryam. Number six, the Dajjal. Number seven, eight, nine, the three earthquakes. One in the east and one in the west and one in Jazeera al-Arab. And the last of them, number 10, is the Nar that will come from Aden. And Aden is the famous city in Yemen. Tasuq aw tahshurun nas. It will gather the people to be to ma'ahum haythu batu wa tuqilu ma'ahum haythu qalu. And it will stop when they need to stop and it will go when they're going to go. In other words, it is something that is truly miraculous that it will force the people to flee but in a manner that they can still rest a while. So they will go because you cannot walk from Aden all the way to Bilad al-Sham except in two, three weeks. It's not going to be immediate. And in this course of time, people will be forced to rest. When they rest, the fire will rest with them. When they wake up, they'll be forced to move again until they stop and they will continue to do this. Now, once again, it appears that these people are simply not believers because other ahadith tell us that judgment will not come upon believers. And with, regret, with, with respect to Bilad al-Sham, with respect to modern day you know, Syria, and again, when we say Sham, frankly, most likely it is Aqsa. When we say Sham, don't think of yani, the modern country Syria, because that was what the classical Arabs call that entire region. But it might be Damascus, it might be Syria, but I'm saying technically all of that region is Bilad al-Sham. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day, hadith is authentic Muslim Ahmad, he pointed to uh, the north, which is Bilad al-Sham. And he pointed to Sham and he said, in that direction you will be gathered. In that direction is Ardul Mahshar. Ardul Mahshar. What is Ardul Mahshar? Ardul Mahshar is the land of resurrection. Now, 
Does this mean that Qiyama will take place in Sham? Because Mahshar is Hashar is judgment day. The response is no. There are two types of Hashar. There is the final showdown Hashar of this dunya. And then there is the Hashar of judgment day in the next life. بعد الموت بعد ال, you know the trumpet and whatnot the hashar of this dunya there is no qiyama it's just a death and that's what he's talking about the ard al mahshar all of the last remnants of mankind will be gathered in one place all of mankind whoever remains will be gathered in one place and that is why it is called what ard al mahshar what will that land be bilad al sham and so they will continue to go there until finally they are all gathered in one place and then the final very end of mankind will take place and that is the trumpet being blown and we'll talk about that right now inshallah ta'ala but before we get there one of the things that has caused me to pause and contemplate for many many years and these are topics that I have been reading about and thinking about and reflecting about for literally 20 years of my life, thinking about these issues and whatnot. And one of the things that has caused me consternation, to say the least, is the fact that there seems to be absolutely no mention of lands and regions far away from that central areas. Right. And the reason why this brings great consternation is because I happen to be living in some of those lands that are very, very far away and ha- seem to have absolutely no mention whatsoever. It's as if everything is simply gone. All of the events, everything is now back to where civilization began. And I have no solid explanation. Allahu A'lam Other than to say The only thing There are no humans left Except in that region And that is terrifying Even as it explains a lot about what we are reading And Allah knows best I don't know what to say Really I don't there's no mention of any land, not even Africa, Egypt, China. These were con- names that the Arabs knew, the Prophet ﷺ knew. It's not as if we can say, okay, this land was quote unquote undiscovered. Okay, how about Egypt, Masr? Right? How about other lands? How about Sin and Hind? Nothing is mentioned at all. At, we're talking about the last days of mankind. We're talking about Isa and Mahdi and Dajjal. It's really this area and only this area. This meaning? Which area? Bilad al-Sham in the Middle Bilad East Sham. overall, Hijaz, mm-hmm. but not, you know, Mecca, Medina, all the, it seems that will be the only region left. And at one level, it does make sense. Because where are the big powers and where will things happen when they happen? At one level, it makes sense. Allahumma sallim. At another level, we say Allah knows best. I don't have an answer. But I have not found any reference of any, even a hint that there will be other places, things happening. Everything seems to be happening in the central region. And this is the region where everything began in the first place. Ibrahim, Ismail, even before Noah. This basically, this is where it all is. According to legend, even Adam, all of this is legend. But anyway, so Allah knows best. I don't have any answer to this. That point that he ended on was pretty deep, guys. I, I have to admit that based on what these prophecies in the texts are saying, no other region is going to be left. You know, people from there are just going to be gone and just in the central area is where human life is still going to be and then time wraps up so that could be one possible explanation and uh, the other thing is this fire that's going to be you know tearing up destroying the earth and in a large large uh, quantities of land just burning up you know how does that even start is this some sort of like chemical reaction? Is it a forced fire that happens? Is it a supernatural event? Is somebody, I don't know, gonna be smoking a cigarette or something and then and then that triggers a whole series of 
fire events. It's just that, the, you know, this fire is going to happen and other signs of the end take place. And uh, maybe, maybe people don't want to be alive to see that. Maybe that is a mercy from God that people aren't alive to see that because maybe some people can't handle it or couldn't handle it. And uh, maybe some people would have actually changed their faith or lost their faith when they saw some of these things happening. Who knows? I'm just um, making some uh, speculation just based on what was said in this video. Very, very, very scary thoughts. I think if you dwell on this, you know, or for me anyways, I'm the type of person, like if I think on something for too long, I start to feel it and I'm like, oh. But like, what if this happens? And what if I'm alive? Or what if, you know, nobody else is alive? You know, it's just like, this is the end. So when my mind thinks about that, it's like, it can't really compute, it can't comprehend, you know? We're so used to this world, how it is right now, and uh, in our lifetimes, we, you know, sometimes I think back, I can't even imagine living 2,000 years ago with no internet, no, no cars, you know, no modern, means of transportation that we have no computers what no cell phones it's just yeah i couldn't even think that so like even in the future now it's hard to even imagine if times are different you know if times get better for a while or times get way worse where catastrophe and calamity is just happening like crazy it's hard it's really hard for me to imagine that i'm just so used to what life is right now that's really all i have to base things off of i'm sure people living 30 40 50 years ago even maybe didn't even imagine that we would have some of the things that we have now maybe they did maybe not maybe if somebody was alive from 200 years ago probably then that would have been a big jump of like wow i did not know the world would look like this but for for me it's just like yeah you know i can't even imagine the end times all right guys uh let me know do you think the same way like is it hard for you to imagine the end times or is it something that is just so clear for you i'm actually curious to know what your thoughts are about this sound off down below all right guys so stay tuned next week for the final episode in this end time series and i look forward to seeing all of you there catch you guys next time later